What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. Hurricane Lee is still a major Category 4 hurricane, a high-end Category 4 hurricane, that is. It is currently impacting some shear right now to its north and maybe a little bit to its west, which is why it is weakening as of right now. Also, a bit of dry air has apparently got in into this and it may undergo an eyeball replacement cycle pretty soon so we'll have to wait and see how that plays out but here's the latest from the nhc when it comes to lee 150 miles per hour 942 millibars moving west northwest at 13 miles per hour tropical storm force winds extend out 35 miles from the center and, hur and sorry hurricane force winds extend out 35 miles from the center and tropical storm force winds extend out 150 miles from the center. I do apologize for that error. Please forgive me. So there's that. Here's the discussion according to that. Here's the situation. A small eye of Lee can be... The small eye of Lee has become cloud-filled this afternoon. Uh, at an, a an AMSR a microwave overpass and earlier reconnaissance reports that Lee's eye is, was a little less than 10 nautical miles in diameter. So this is almost a pinhole eye at this point. So... Pinhole eyes, for those of you who do not know, those are eyes that are less than 10 miles in diameter. So the, we're getting pretty close to that. The microwave imagery revealed a well-defined inner core, but there is, was a lack of banding noted just outside of the core. This is likely due to some drier uh, mid-level air and has wrapped, that has wrapped around the circulation. The hurricane, uh, uh, the Air Force Reserve Hurricane Hunter aircraft did not find any stronger flight level or SFMR winds uh, uh, after the release of the previous advisory, and the initial intensity of this advisory has been set to 130 knots. This is a blend of the earlier reconnaissance flight and Dvorak estimates. The moderate shear and dry air has affected Lee today and is not expected to abate during the next 12 to 24 hours. After this time, the upper a level wind pattern could be a little more conducive for re-strengthening, yada, yada, yada. Here's the forecast right here. They're actually forecasting this to slowly weaken over the next few days, although it has it uh, kind of re-strengthening up to potentially 145 miles per hour after 48 hours. However, due to ongoing potential eyeball replacement cycles, they're not 100% sure how this is going to uh, play out. So we'll have to wait and see as time continues to go on. But I will say this for sure. If we do see a situation where this thing weakens considerably, maybe down to a Category 3 or a cat, even a Category 2, the weaker this, uh, this system gets, the more west it could potentially go because as time continues to go on, that ridge couldn't be uh, couldn't pick it like for those of you who do not know the stronger a hurricane typically is the more north it'll typically uh, go especially after that turn that, that that's basically how it works that's how ridges and how weakness in ridges work uh, the hurricane goes towards the lowest uh, goes away from the highest pressure and towards the lowest pressure that's how this stuff works so if we see a weaker system and we see like it maybe a cat 3 or cat 2 this could potentially push the system further to the west and maybe potentially head to, uh, maybe potentially towards the Bahamas a little bit more. We'll have to pay attention to it for sure. We'll go ahead and give you the cone as we look at this. Here's the 5 p.m. cone forecast to move uh, more, le more or less west-northwest. It is forecast to slow down considerably in the next 48, uh, 48 hours, down to about 5 to 7 knots, before starting to potentially make that turn that we've been anticipating according to the NHC, although it is going to be rather slow when it does that. So we'll have to pay attention to it and see how strong this gets for sure. We're not 100% sure what's going on. This thing has really defied expectations. It became a Cat 5 last night, got to 165 mile per hour winds, basically did what Matthew did in 2016, and went from a Cat 1 to a Cat 5 in 24 hours. And then things started to get in its way. We started to get more wind shear. We started to see a bit more dry air. It's just a bit of an up and down at this point that we'll have to continue to monitor. Now we'll go ahead and show you some forecast models. We're going to go ahead and start with, of course, the European right here. Here's the 12Z European. Continues to move more and more west. Right here, the, tw the European has this continuing to jog more and more to the west, potentially bringing some outer band impacts to the Antilles as well as Puerto Rico and even the Dominican Republic right here. However, it is expected to start turning in the next five days, and then once it does, it's expected to move at a very fast pace up the uh, up towards the new, either New England or the Atlantic Canada coast as either a post tropical maybe even a tropical or extra tropical cyclone as time continues to progress so that's the european it has it moving very slowly to the west so 
We'll have to pay attention to it for sure. And what's really driving this thing very moving very slowly to the west, we can go ahead and show you that. A stronger than anticipated uh, ridge over here could potentially block this from moving to uh, more west, which if that held, that would be pretty good news. And then we have this trough right here that will start dragging this more and more to the north and get this, uh, get this away from this ridge right here. So the big situation we have is let's if this thing over here is weaker than anticipated in the next 48 hours, this thing's going to move more west. If it gets stronger than anticipated, it, it might just stall over uh, after a bit. So we'll have to wait and see what happens for sure. But if we see like this get uh, getting weaker at all, that's going to be a bigger threat to land than initially anticipated. So that's the European. Here's the GFS right here. The GFS has this thing continuing to move. It starts moving, uh, making a bit of a jog. Then it starts to turn a more at a more gradual point. The GFS actually is similar to the European, although it has it moving a little bit faster about a day earlier before impacting the Atlantic Canada as either a hurricane or a post-tropical cyclone. Although New England could not be ruled out for impacts, especially Maine and New Hampshire as we look into this. So we'll have to pay attention to it as time continues to progress, but that's the GFS for you guys. Next one we're showing you is the CMC. The CMC has this thing organizing and developing and then move and then starts to make that jog to the west before turning to the north and potentially starting to lead to some impacts. Although there is a new system that I am paying attention to and so is the CMC and several models here. So that's the situation we have going on right here and we'll cover this new potential area of interest in, an, in another video down the road but for now the main focus is on lee i might run into it a little bit towards the end but that's probably something i might start covering tomorrow as that has a potential threat if it does develop towards the antilles in the next 10 days but we'll have to keep an eye on all these models for sure next one we're showing you is the icon model we're going to the 12z icon has a similar situation going on with the cmc and it has it making a beeline towards either atlantic canada or new england so that's our situation over there with all these models here's the five-day track models all right here it is expected to start turning it's supposed to stay west of bermuda which is pretty interesting and that's why i'm a little concerned especially for our viewers in maine our viewers in atlantic canada uh, down the road so we'll have to keep an eye on this and especially it'll, uh, the strength of this when it gets to the coast will be very determinant on the strength of at of at landfall so the intensity models continue to be all over the place majority keeping it around a category four strength some have it going up back up to cat five we'll have to wait and see see as time continues to go on primarily due to all the conditions that lee is encountering either way this thing became a cat five and it, it got there quite quickly so this is a strong system that we'll have to monitor as time continues to progress next one we're going to go stuff we're going to go ahead and show you is kind of the conditions otherwise that both lee and this new area of interest that's out here at least in the on africa right now are going to go through global sea temperatures for lee great very great 29 30 plus degrees celsius 84 plus degree fahrenheit for those of you who live in the united states ocean heat content impressive very impressive and the worst part about this too is that lee is apps is doing absolutely nothing to really rob the ocean heat content or global sea temperatures like franklin did when it stalled out so Let's say we have that. New, let's say we have another system move off the coast of Africa and start to impact these waters right here with a li with little wind shear and enough moist air. Things could definitely take off, similar to what we saw with Lee just now. So we'll have to pay attention to it down the road. I'd say starting maybe in the next four days, we'll have to pay attention to it. And here's the shear right here. This is what is really causing some a bit of disorganization on Lee's part. There is about 30 knots of wind shear to the north of Lee. There's about 25 knots of shear towards Lee's core. So this is something we'll have to monitor. And if this weakens faster than expected, Lee could well be on a path of re-strengthening and re-intensification. And there is still pretty good conditions ahead of it once it gets to them. So we'll have to pay attention to it for sure as time continues to go on. This is basically a giant waiting and giant guessing game at this point point in time.
but that's our situation with all the conditions. Next thing we're going to go ahead and show you is the latest hurricane models right here. Here's the uh, here's all of them right here. Here's the HMON. This thing was initially anticipated to, at, by at this point to get down to 913. However, it's been encountering a lot of issues, so I'm kind of ruling this whole thing out in the next 24 hours. Although the it, category 5 reintensification is not off the table and the HMON continues to have this thing fluctuating between cat 5 and cat four, uh, uh, 4 strength while in, engaging in uh, several eyewall replacement cycles and while it gets a lot larger. In fact, from here to here, we're uh, we're pretty much around 200 like this we're about 2 to 300 miles out in diameter at this point the hurricane force winds are probably at least 100 about uh, according to the, the hmon so we'll have to pay attention to it as time continues to progress like the how large this thing is is actually and basically going about basically going off the screen at this point so we'll have to monitor it for sure next on thing we're showing you is the halfs a over here Half a similar situation, kind of a fluctuation in intensity, although they are not ruling out Category 5 reintensification once it gets out, out of that shear and the dry air kind of gets out of the system, gets flushed out. So that's the half A. Continues to really grow in size, undergo several eyewall replacement cycles along the way. So I'll have to pay attention to it for sure. Well, uh, I still am not ruling out a Cat 5 reintensification at this time, primarily because of the, the huge amount of stuff that's going on. But we'll have to wait and see. Next thing we'll have to uh, show you is the halves B. Halves B is really uh, fluctuating in intensity. It's actually going a little bit lower on uh, right now, around Category 3 intensity, before really starting to rapidly intensify back to a Category 5 hurricane, a larger Category 5 hurricane at that, up to 170 knots or so, which is about 195 miles per hour. I don't think it's going to get that strong, but I'm still not ruling out anything uh, around. I'm still not ruling out anything before 175 at this point in time. It's just a huge waiting game at this point. But the half speed continues to fluctuate in intensity, undergo some eyewall replacement cycles, and that's pretty much what we have going on with the half speed. Last one we're going to go ahead and show you is the H wharf, and the H wharf has been pretty interesting so far. It's forecast to fluctuate in intensity, similar to all the other models. Category five reintensification is not ruled out at this time right now. However, it is expected to stay around category four strength after the next 72 hours. Although it does get quite a bit larger in the process, undergoes some eyewall replacement cycles. So yeah, this is a situation we need to monitor for sure, especially for our viewers that are watching watching right now from New England. So if you guys are watching from there, be sure to share the video, let people know what's going on, but please keep in mind that we are still nine days out, so we'll have to pay attention and keep an eye out on what's going on. We also have another area of interest that potentially is going to get tagged by the NHC. We'll have to keep an eye on it for you guys. But with that being said, we're closing the video out right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps us out, helps us make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. But with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.